Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Project Lemons to Lemonade. Our next guest made a professional career out of ugly doodling. She literally paints the picture for company strategies, and we're going to show you what that means. And her husband is very handsome. He told her to write that. Please welcome Allie Marshall from Strix Insights. Hi, Allie. Hi, Daphne. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. I'm super excited to share what I what you've just been showing me. You are a narrative coach and graphic facilitator, and I can't wait to show everybody what that means. But like, tell us a little bit about about what that means. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. I just your in your enthusiasm is infectious. This is a, a Friday afternoon that we're recording this, and you're lifting me up. So thank you, Daphne. Awesome. Uh, so, so yeah, my work as a graphic facilitator and a team coach using the narrative coaching system of Dr. David Drake means that my mission is to help teams and groups to do their best work together. Okay, and you do that in a really unique way. Like, tell me a little bit more about the narrative piece uh, in there. You know, I like. I I know I know that this is like near and dear to your heart. So there's a lot of different ways to describe narrative coaching because it is just such a powerful toolkit. Um, but one of the ways that I like to think about it is it is really about the power of the stories that we tell ourselves. And that when we are intentional about understanding those stories that we're telling individually and collectively, that we can really accelerate change in more uh, successful and satisfying and sustainable ways. Can you give me an example of how that's used in uh, corporations for decision making or planning out strategies for companies? Yes, and now again, this is like quite a big tool toolkit. So I would just share one example where um, that a lot of the time in change efforts, uh, uh, we're not really um, we're we're working we're creating action plans and goals, and we think it's this very linear process to get from A to B. Um, but a lot of the time, some of the structures. I, I like to call it like an iceberg that, you know, the, the tip of the iceberg is all those things where it's like, oh, we put this action plan together and everybody has their tasks. And so we're going to get from point A to B. But below the waterline, the, the part of the iceberg that sinks the ship is all the stories and the attitudes and kind of the aspects of culture um, that mean that the change effort isn't going to be successful. So narrative coaching gives us this opportunity to go deeper on that iceberg and make it easier and, as I said, more, more likely to succeed to have positive change by the end of the process. Okay, awesome. And then you also, um, you like add on your graphic facilitation, which is, you were telling me a little bit about um, it, it helps people not change their minds, but you know, uh, what does it do, <laughs> actually? <laughs> Yeah, great question. Thank you. Um, so yeah, again, the idea here, I guess, you know, I'm obsessed with finding uh, simpler ways for leaders and companies to, to do things. And so the use of the pictures, it leverages the fact that so much of our brain sense processing capacity is dedicated to vision. And, you know, if we look at the history of humans, you know, we were drawing our whole kind of view of the world on caves, cave walls, you know, for thousands of years. So it's bringing more of that idea um, back into groups so that we can accelerate the process of what we're doing by using our brain's visual sense-making capacity. Okay, very cool. So can you show us an example of the stuff that you do? Because this is where like the ugly doodling turns into a uh, corporate strategy. And I just think that is so cool. You, that is so nice. I, I love to have this conversation with you about it. So yeah, I mean, these are a little bit more of what we would call a graphic recording uh, project. So it wasn't so much where I was doing live facilitation with the team, but more um, creating pictures as the team was working on things. So uh, those are just a few examples. And in real life, these are like eight feet long, four feet high. I'll uh, scroll over to the next page, but you know, I do lots of stuff with my clients with these giant calendar murals. Um, you know, uh, here's, here are some visual KPI scorecards even that we've created for clients in the past where they literally color it in with markers. So it's just, you know, turning some of these things that can be really complicated into a more engaging visual and energizing format. Mm. And people can do it themselves too. You have like a kit that you, 
that now when you can't visit them, you can send them a kit, right? Well, yes, I do. I have uh, custom templates, um, big uh, printed templates. But as I mentioned to you, I'm in the midst of a very rapid transformation to be able to recreate the same type of experience that I offer in person in a digital setting. So I'm going to keep you posted on that. Awesome. Um, we talked about remote work being a marathon, not a sprint. And you've been teaching corporations how to transition their decision-making strategies from you know, the boardroom or like the, the team meeting to the virtual world. Can you share some tips on how companies can do that? We're gonna have virtual work for a long time. And so I think it's important that we do think of it as a marathon and not a sprint. Um, and the other reason why I created this tool, it's a little workbook, and Daphne, I know we're gonna share the information for your listeners about how they can access that. Uh, but another reason why I created it too is we're seeing so much information flying around um, that these articles and these models, and I've kind of had the sense that it's like, we, we're kind of getting out of touch with the fact that we really do have the knowledge to respond to this. Um, and it, you know, we're, we're overloading ourselves even with information in a lot of ways. So I like to think of it as a marathon, not a sprint, because it's a, it allows us to intu intuitively tap into, if I was running a marathon, well, first of all, I know I would need to manage my energy so that I could go the distance, right? Marathoners who cross, you know, that final mile marker are not the ones who sprinted for the first five kilometers of the course. So um, that's one of the first tips and uh, that is covered in the workbook in terms of thinking about where you are on the journey and having a conversation with your team to say, is this really one of the crux moments of our personal race? Like, is this like a giant hill or headwinds? Like, should we really be all hands on deck at this time? And I, and I think, you know, we're hearing about people working extremely long hours and if this isn't the crux time of your race, you know, how can you cut that back now so that you have fuel in the tank to cross the finish line? So that's, that's one of the first steps is manage energy now to go the distance. Um, you know, the other one too that we know is uh, the people who put all those miles on to be able to run marathons, they finesse their technique. So they think about what their actual running gait is and make sure that that is an efficient way for them to make forward progress. You know, they're not swinging their arms all around. It's very efficient. And they're also thinking about um, how the way that they're running uh, can help keep them safe from injury. So I won't get into the detail of that here. You can check it out in the workbook, but that would be my other challenge is how can we think more about our technique for making forward progress in virtual collaboration and make sure that that is efficient and effective and isn't going to cause harm. Um, now, a third one, and Daphne, I, I don't know this about you. Like, do you run marathons? Definitely not. <laughs> I don't, I, I, nor do I. I did used to do some more sporty things like in another part of my life. But, you know, I've been thinking about this idea of mile markers. And, you know, if you or, you or I was, were going to run a marathon, would we ever sign up to run a marathon that didn't have mile markers? You wouldn't know where you were, right? Well, and like, how would you have the motivation to keep going, right? So I think this is the other piece, too, is when we think about this as a marathon and not a sprint, we really need to think about putting those mile markers in place and celebrating all these wins, big and small. So that's one of the other invitations in the worksheet is to think about how are you making use of that sense of celebration and accomplishment in your team and especially um, really noticing your team members who are doing things that are challenging for them. We're all having to step outside of our comfort zones. You know, how do you give them that extra pat on the back when you see that they've taken on a challenge, which is really difficult for them and they've been able to make that work. Awesome. Thank you. I love the celebration one. I think with uh, with COVID and everything happening, we're not celebrating enough. The, like the, so many companies have had such major accomplishments in getting through all of this. So I love that, you know, it's good to set these markers and celebrate as you move through each step. Thank you so much for joining us today, Allie. And everybody Thank will you. have Allie's worksheet down in the comments. <laughs> Thank you so much, Daphne. Thanks. Thanks.